This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to talk about crowns are for kings, the judgment seat of Christ. So at this judgment seat of Christ, born again believers are going to get crowns for their Christian service. And if we weren't going to be kings, if the Lord wasn't going to make us kings, then why would he be giving us a crown? So, let's talk about preparing for judgment. Before the saints come back with the Lord as kings at the second coming, we will go through the judgment seat of Christ where we will get a crown for faithful Christian service. And if we aren't going to be kings, then why would we get crowns? Look at Romans fourteen ten through 12. It says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You're going to give account for everything that you do. The fact that we're going to give account for the lives we live should make a Christian live right. In actions and in thoughts. Although we believe in eternal security, we still believe holy living matters. And one reason for that is because of the judgment seat of Christ. At this judgment, you are judged for Christian service, not for sins. At this judgment, it is only born again believers. But 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So the things you do in this life will affect the next life. And I don't know about you, but I want to live as close to God as I can so that I don't look like a failure when I get to the judgment seat. But I mentioned crowns. Crowns are for kings. So let's talk about these crowns. Some teach that all the crowns mentioned in the Bible are the same crown, but just called by different names. I personally don't believe that, but I, I really wouldn't argue on that. The th one thing is for certain is we need to be living right so that we can get a crown or crowns. But let's look at the crowns. First, you have the crown of life. And if you get this crown of life, then you are a soldier in the Lord's army. So we're, these crowns are associated with different uh, fields or occupations or things like that. The crown of life, I associate that with being a soldier. In James 1.12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So a Christian who endures is in the Lord's army. 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So being someone who endures is associated with being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2.4 no man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And the Bible says we're to walk worthy and be pleasing in the sight of God. A good soldier can keep fighting through persecution, through temptations. Second Timothy 3.12 Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to suffer people saying things about you, doing things to you because you're a Christian. A good soldier is willing to die daily to the flesh. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I die daily. Just like a soldier would die for his country, we should die to the flesh and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And then we won't be giving in to temptation. We'll endure some things. A good soldier uses his weapon. This is a sharp two-edged sword. This is a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This weapon is a flashlight that exposes the sin of the world. Psalms 149.6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. The sword in the Bible is the word of God. Hebrews 4.12. Now 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We don't use physical violence in this warfare. This is spiritual warfare for the Christian soldier. A good soldier finishes the mission. 2 Timothy 4.7, Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have 
finished my course, I have kept the faith. So enduring temptation to sin, to the death, will get you a crown of life. This doesn't mean you'll be sinless. Paul himself wasn't even without sin. I don't know how the Lord will judge it. I don't know how strict he'll be on it. The best you can do is the best you can do. Live right. Ask God to forgive you when you don't. And just keep running the race. But you need to endure temptation. When Jesus was tempted, he quoted the word of God. He used his sharp two-edged sword. So if you want to do good at the judgment seat of Christ, then be a soldier. And you just might get that crown of life. And next you need to be like a sprinter or an Olympic runner. This way you can get the incorruptible crown. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every one that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. That's a crown that's not eternal, a crown that they can't take to heaven with them. But we, an incorruptible, that's a crown that's going to last forever. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So this crown, it's about keeping your body in good shape to do the Lord's work. Not necessarily bodily exercise because it profiteth little, but you don't want to be a glutton. You don't want to be guilty of giving the flesh everything it wants because this just makes you weaker. Weakness can be a good thing because it gets you closer to God. For example, Paul's thorn in the flesh kept him humble. However, most times a person who lives for the flesh becomes weak to the flesh and gets further from God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And sin works on the body. Things like fornication, drunkenness, smoking, overeating, not enough exercise, even though it profiteth little. But sin can wear down the body. And it can make it harder to serve God. Once again, one of our greatest examples, the Apostle Paul, said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You're not worried about keeping your salvation. Your concern is keeping a crown. It will be harder to finish your course if your body is worn down by sin. Reading the Word of God reminds you to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Romans 8.13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. And a man who walks after the Spirit will yield himself to the Holy Spirit and not defile the temple of God. So if you want that incorruptible crown, you need to be like a sprinter. If you want that crown of life, you need to be like a soldier. If you want the crown of righteousness, you need to be a seeker. In 2 Timothy 4.8, it says, Henceforth there is let it for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. In Titus 2.13, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Every day we should be seeking the Lord's return, knowing that Jesus Christ could come back at any moment, could help us get the first two crowns, because the race is almost over, and it's easier to endure temptation if you want to be living right at His return. So we're looking for Jesus Christ, but many people, they're not looking for the rapture, they're looking for the Antichrist. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. This is true when it comes to hearing the gospel and getting saved. It is also true because when we read the Bible, it strengthens our faith. If we read it, then it will help us seek the Lord's return and have faith in His coming. The Bible says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read in Isaiah 34, 16. So be a seeker. And next, be a soul winner. This is how you'll get the crown of rejoicing. Be a soul winner. And 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? In Luke 15, 10 it says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy and the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. The rejoicing is about people who have gotten saved. This crown may not be so much about the quantity of souls you've led to the Lord. It may be more about planting and watering. As it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 8, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. 
So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every one shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. My pastor, for example, planted and watered at a man's house for 25 years. If a soul winner goes to that man's house tomorrow and leads him to the Lord, who's going to get more of a reward? My pastor who visited the man, giving him the gospel for 25 years, or the soul winner who just showed up? I think my pastor would. He put a lot more planning and watering into that man than the other person did. Just do the best you can. Put the gospel out as much as you can. Witness as much as you can. The Lord's keeping track of everything. It may not be about how many souls you actually got saved. It could possibly be about how much effort you put into it. So if you want to be getting the crown of rejoicing, be a soul winner. Now next, if you want a crown of glory, be a shepherd. Now, this is primarily a pastor's crown, but I believe it could be for others as well. In 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4, it says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear... Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. If you want a crown of glory, be a shepherd. Anyone who is feeding the sheep will get this crown. Pastors, teachers, evangelists, missionaries with the right motive. TV preachers, most of them probably won't get this crown because they're in this thing for filthy lucre. They're in this thing for money. And next, you can't feed the flock and without knowing the word. How are you going to feed people the word of god and get the crown of glory as a shepherd if you don't know the word the bible says in second timothy 4 2 preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so you need to be a soldier you need to be a sprinter you need to be a seeker you need to be a soul winner and you need to be a shepherd and next you need to be a sword bearer and this is how you can get the Bible believer's crown. In Job 31, 35 through 36, Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. So this is the Bible believer's crown. A crown given to the student of the Bible who consistently reads and studies the Bible. Revelation 19.15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That is your weapon, the word of God. The Lord consistently says, have ye not read? As Paul said in 1 Timothy 4.13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So are you reading it, believing it, and not changing it? If you change it, you're going to lose the crown because you're not being a Bible believer. We don't adjust the Bible to fit Baptist beliefs. We adjust our beliefs to fit the Bible. And there is a difference between being King James only and being a King James Bible believer because there's some men who are King James only because that's just their preferred one or they're just trying to reach a certain crowd. But when it comes right down to it, they don't actually believe the Bible. They're not a King James Bible believer. If you're a King James Bible believer, then when you approach the Bible, you don't want to change it. You say there's no errors in it. If somebody shows you an error in it, a supposed error, and you don't even know the answer to it, you automatically believe the Bible anyway because it's innocent until proven guilty. It's never been proven guilty and it never will be proved guilty. I want the Bible believer's crown. I want to be a sword bearer. It's the sword, the sharp sword that comes out of the Lord's mouth. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, let's, that's the crowns. We've looked at some of the crowns. Now, let's look at gold, silver, and precious stones. In 1 Corinthians 3.11-12, through 12, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build up on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, 
wood, hay, stubble. Okay, there's the things. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. That's what you will get at the judgment seat of Christ. If you're using God's words, methods, and wanting Him to get the glory in everything, then you're building with gold, silver, and precious stones. Maybe you will have a precious stone put in your crown every time you, you do something for the Lord. Uh, we don't know 100% how this thing's going to work. But in Zechariah 9, 16, it says, And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon this land. So, stone and a crown. A person that you lead, lead to the Lord could be a stone and a crown. 1 Peter 2, 5 calls us lively stones. So, stones can stand for souls. Every time you win a soul to the Lord or maybe helped win a soul to the Lord, that could be another stone in your crown. 1 Corinthians 3.13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What is the motive and quality of your service? What sort is it? 1 Corinthians 3, 14 and 15. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Saved by fire, just like 1 Peter 3, 20 says, saved by water. Uh, Noah was saved by water in the sense the water never touched him. You'll be saved by fire as in the fire never touches you. You can lose rewards, but yet you yourself will be saved. If we are working and building with the right motive and wanting God to get the glory, then we are building with gold, silver, and precious stones, so we will get gold, silver, and precious stones. So the moment you get saved, you start building. You start building something. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you will present what you built to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's built with gold, silver, and precious stones then you build it with the right motive, with God getting the glory, and what you built will survive the fire, and you're going to get some things. Ephesians 6, 5 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Are you living right and doing a good job at work when the boss isn't around? It says, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Are you doing a good job and living right to please men with our service to please men or to please God? It says in verse 7 in Ephesians 6, With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Any good thing you do, the Lord remembers and you will receive something for it. Verse 8 says, Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Whatsoever good thing any man doeth. I mean anything. It doesn't even really have to be uh, something that you would consider spiritual. If it's a good thing and God gets glory out of it, then you're going to receive something for it. And the next thing, ruling over cities. The Bible talks about ruling over cities. And you see, as a born-again believer, you're going to go into the millennium after the second coming. You're going to go into the millennium with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've been a good servant, then you're going to rule over cities. It says in Re Revelation 1, he's made us kings and priests. It says in Revelation 5 that we're going to reign as kings on the earth. And in Luke 19, 11 through 17, it talks about this. Where some people are going to be good and faithful servants and they're going to rule over cities. So in the millennium, we will rule over cities if the Lord says we are a good and faithful servant. In Revelation 20 and verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You're part of that first resurrection. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. As it says in 2 Timothy 2.12, now the next thing, losing rewards. Can you lose rewards? Colossians 2.18 says, Let no man beguile you of your reward. Mark uh, 9.41, For whatsoever 
For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Second John 1, 7 through 8. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. So you can lose a reward. You can have a reward that's not as good as it would have been if you were living right and doing things you're supposed to do. And it seems like in Second John that you can lose a reward for supporting a deceiver who doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Someone who doesn't believe Jesus Christ is God. But the one of the most important things here is you need to use your time wisely. As I said, the moment you got saved, you started building something. Have you been using your time wisely? Have you been building at all? Have you been saved 30 years and your building has nothing on it? It says in Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, I'm trying to do what I can the best way I know how to build something. To put some gold, silver, and precious stones on my building. Are you doing that? Are you redeeming the time? What kind of king are you going to be? Are you going to be a king without a crown? But crowns are for kings.